Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to my channel. Now before I begin, I just want to say thanks to everybody who subscribed so far. I really appreciate it and uh, just wanted to say thank you. Now today's topic is all about the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is more than a year old now. And Samsung just released the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and the S22 lines of phones. So I'm going to talk about my experiences with this phone and whether it's worth picking up, whether I think it's worth picking up in 2022. First of all, I want to talk about the first thing that stands out when you look at this phone, and that's that beautiful 6.8 inch Super AMOLED display. It's a Quad HD display, has a maximum resolution of 3200 by 1440, and it's bright. It goes up to 1500 nits if you have it set to auto and you're in bright sunlight. But indoors, it gets plenty bright enough. I usually have my brightness set to manual and I don't think I've ever had to go over the middle, like past the midpoint if I'm indoors. If I'm outdoors, I'll, I'll just set it to auto. The colors are also very bright, very colorful, very saturated. Actually the vivid mode is actually a bit too saturated for me, but this phone also has a natural color setting and that's what I usually have it set to. The display is also capable of HDR 10 plus and it has a refresh rate of 120 hertz. And the 120 hertz just makes everything feel very fast, very snappy. Now it has a variable refresh rate so it's able to go below that depending on the type of task you're doing. Uh, it does that in order to save battery so that's a good thing to have. I believe the lowest it can go is 10 hertz but the new s22 ultra can go down to 1 hertz if i'm not mistaken now depending where you are in the world this phone is either going to have the snapdragon 888 processor or the exynos 2100 i have the snapdragon model but from what i've heard the exynos model is more or less the same so it doesn't really matter which version you get the the performance going to be about the same from what i heard the base model has 120 gigabytes of storage, but you can go as high as 512 gigabytes. The base model also has 12 gigabytes of RAM, but you can go as high as 16 gigabytes if you get the higher storage options, I believe. But 12 gigabytes of RAM has been enough for me, and I have never been in a situation where this phone has been wanting been wanting RAM, or, and I've had multiple apps open in the background and play video games. And this phone's been able to pretty much handle everything I've thrown at it. If you use your phone for a lot of productivity apps such as video or photo editing, um, this phone has been great for that. I use Lightroom to edit photos on this and sometimes I'll use uh, Adobe Rush or um, I believe it's called Power Video Editor um, to quickly edit you know, some of my smaller videos on this and uh, the performance has been good. I've been able to edit 4K no problem. Obviously it's not as powerful as like a desktop or the iPhones out there, like the iPhones are just crazy. You won't really need anything faster as far as a phone goes. Battery life is pretty decent too. This has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and uh, if I have it charged at 100% at the morning, um, by the time I'm ready to go to bed, I'll probably have like 20% left and I'm a pretty heavy user. For me, that's good enough. That's more than good enough. So uh, battery life on this phone has been good for me. Now I've been using Samsung phones since 2012. I started with the S3, then went to the Note 4, then had the S7 for a bit, then I moved on to Note 8, Note 9, and now I'm finally on this phone. And this is the best Samsung phone. I have a fastest and best Samsung phone that I've ever used. Um, I remember all the phones before it used to have some type of lag or they would eventually start lagging after a few months. But this phone, I've had it for six months now and it hasn't lagged on me really. And the 120 Hertz refresh rate just makes everything feel really fast and very snappy. 
As far as software goes, this is running Android 12. It was running Android 11 when I first bought it, but it's been since been updated to Android 12, and the performance has been pretty much the same. Uh, I haven't seen any really no noticeable uh, change in performance ever since upgrading to Android 12. In fact, the phone feels better in my opinion than when I first got it. Like it just feels a little more fluid and snappy in my hands, but that's expected because you know the. The, the software gets updated throughout time and it just uh, becomes better. Playing video games on this phone is a real joy. That screen just makes viewing anything on it really great. Sometimes you just stand there, like sit there and just look at your screen and you're just like in awe and how beautiful it is. But because of the processor and the, the RAM and just the performance in general, playing games on this at maximum settings um, is great because the phone can actually handle it. The look of the phone itself, in my opinion, it's a nice phone. I prefer the boxier look of the Note 20 and the new S22 Ultra. I like the look of this phone too. I'm not a huge fan of the curved edges, but they're not super curved on this phone, so they don't really bother me or get in the way. So for me, the curved edges aren't a huge deal. Now for the material, Samsung used Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and back. The back is like a frosted glass, so the fingerprints don't show as much. It's still glass, so you still have to be careful if you drop it. I always have my phone in a case, but that's something to keep in mind because this phone is all glass and it will break. Um, it's got metal chassis on the side. It, the phone has a good weight to it. It's not super light, but it's not super heavy either. Now, everybody really likes the way the camera bump on this phone looks. Now, the camera system is pretty impressive. You have a main camera lens, which is a 108 megapixels, and it's coupled with laser autofocus. You have a 10 megapixel periscope telephoto lens that's capable of 10 times optical zoom. You also have a three times optical zoom, and there's also a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. Now, in my experience, I get the best photos with the, uh, the main wide and the ultra wide camera. The three times optical zoom, I get some decent shots with that in good lighting. Uh, the 10x zoom as well, but the lighting has to be really good. Indoors, the, uh, the zoom features, you know, under uh, when you have minimal lighting, they don't work as well as the other lenses, so keep that in mind. But as a whole, using this phone for photography is really good. Uh, you also have an option to shoot in professional mode, and that gives you manual control over things like your like your shutter speed and your ISO. So you have like almost like a little more professional camera in your hand. As far as video goes, this can shoot up to 8K in 24 frames per second. You can also have you can also shoot in 4K at up to 60 frames per second and you have 1080p at up to 240 frames per second so a lot of video options there uh, the video quality on this phone 4k it's it's a bit too over sharpened but the video is more than good enough for 98 percent of people out there now this phone also has a 40 megapixel sel selfie camera which is a uh, a lot of megapixels for a selfie camera and the, the selfie camera on this phone is actually really good so if you use your phone for listening to music like if you don't have headphones this can provide some really good sound uh, the bass is decent you know it gets pretty loud um, I don't use the actual speakers much like at least not for like listening to music and stuff I'll put on some headphones if I'm gonna listen to music but it has the option if you need it it charges through US, USB type C and it has 25 watts fast charging, plenty fast for me. The new phones have 45 watt fast charging. The under display fingerprint sensor, it works fine. It's, it'll, it works great. Now another cool feature about this phone, and it's not only this phone, but just top of the line Samsung phones in general is Samsung DeX. Um, basically what this does is it turns your phone into a like a desktop type experience all you have to do is connect your phone to an external monitor and turn on the dex option and 
as you can see it's it's a desktop type experience and this is really good for students out there like you can use Microsoft Word just like you would you know on a computer um, you can also we'll use it to just watch YouTube videos or browse the internet and it even has this Windows like split split application feature which I think is really cool if you're a fan of the S Pen and you want the S Pen like in your phone and you don't want to buy like an extra case for it then go with the S22 Ultra because you will have to buy a case for this phone um, it doesn't come with the S Pen like the S22 Ultra or the Note phones do you have to buy this separately the base model of the S Pen also does not have Bluetooth functionality so you don't have certain features that the Note and S22 Ultra do certain Bluetooth features, but you can get the S Pen Pro, which does have those features, but the one I have doesn't. But I just like using my S Pen for taking notes, um, or if you, if I want to just kill time, you know, I'll do some coloring, which is actually really fun. And for those of you who want to even like learn how to draw, like there's an application in there that teaches you how to draw. So whether or not like you're going to use it, that's up to you. Um, I come from older Node phones, so I'm just used to having an S Pen. That's why I bought it. To wrap things up, do I recommend purchasing this phone in 2022? Well, if you look at it, the displays on this phone and the new Samsung S22 Ultra are basically the same. So I don't think it's gonna be a huge difference. As far as performance goes, the S22 Ultra does have the newer processor, but the newer base model has less RAM. It only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. The base model in the S21 Ultra comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now the new processors are probably more RAM efficient, so probably won't make a difference in real use but that's something to keep in mind but i don't think there's going to be a huge difference in performance because you know it's only one generation now if you want the latest and greatest definitely go get the s22 ultra or one of the new s22 phones but if you want to potentially save some money and then definitely get the s21 ultra it's still you're still getting a lot of phone and there's still a lot of life left in this phone samsung said they'll be providing support for this phone for four years i believe or at least four um, android updates so it's not going to be as long as the s22 ultra because uh, that'll get one additional update but you're only missing one update it's not like these phones are like three generations apart so my opinion, this phone is definitely worth it in 2022. And if you come across one for a good price, I say go ahead, buy the phone. And that's it, guys. Hopefully that video was able to help you guys out. Thanks for tuning in and uh, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the video. Give the video a like if it helped you out. And hopefully I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye.